Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing fine. So welcome back to a brand new episode of ours where we'll be talking about yet another very interesting topic that happens to be uh, the question whether sweating more helps you lose more weight. And this time around I'll do something different. Without getting into further details, right out of the bat I'll just tell you, yes it does. So when the body is subjected to a lot of ambient heat, what it does is it uses sweating as a last resort in way of heat dissipation to maintain homeostasis. So that is all that sweating is, it's just a body's way of getting rid of the excess heat that is usually provided when someone walks out. So just uh, do you know fact is that when we work out, when we do any sort of physiological exercises, we our metabolism on an average increases from 5 to 15 times in our resting metabolism and that excess change in metabolism primarily dissipates in form of heat from the body so the body has to get rid of all that extra heat that is being generated so that is where sweating comes into play and that is where other thermoregulation activities in our body comes into play it has very little to do with burning calories or losing fat in the grand scheme of things. So reason why I said that you actually stand a chance of losing more weight at least initially when you sweat more is the primary reason because you lose a lot of water weight when you sweat. So if you're a normal person having normal food, uh, following a normal regular lifestyle and also having an average body fat percentage, there is a very high chance that you can lose up to one and a half to two kgs of water weight just by sweating a lot. That is actually a fact. So there are a lot of different ways to lose water weight which I'm not going to get into for this video. So that is a separate topic altogether which I might touch upon later. So coming to the crux of the uh, pattern is that uh, when you actually sweat, the initial weight loss is not because you're losing any sort of fat but it's just because your, your body is getting rid of all that excess water it held on to previous. Basically due to your lifestyle, nothing else. So that gives people a sense of accomplishment is that they feel they lost 1 kg in a matter of uh, 1 or 2 days or for some in a matter of few hours. So it has indeed been found in a lot of elite level athletes that they can lose up to 2 kgs of weight like I said after performing a session of their game. So as long as you have this understanding in place, I am very sure that sweating should not be confused by losing weight or losing fat as of that matter. Sweating and fat loss has very very little to do with each other let me tell you because if it was the top level athletes would not have been from countries where the average temperature is like 15 16 degrees i can take a lot of example but that would just uh, increase the length of the video so what i'm trying to say here is more than focusing on whether you're sweating or not and more than being obsessed with breaking a sweat you guys just should focus on the quality of the workout ahead focus on the proper movements that you're supposed to do make it challenging for you that is good enough to help you uh, losing your fat once you get the workout in place along with your diet. So stop obsessing about it first. So the next topic that I would like to uh, spin off from here is another question which I get a lot of times from a lot of people and especially uh, being subjected to this fallacy a few years back. I'll just start off with a story. What happened is when I used to work out at a Akhara back in 2013-14 uh, so I walked out there uh, for around 4-5 to five years, that's where my foundational training started. Though so there was no AC and most often than not the fans didn't work. So during the summers, the temperature got as high as 40 to 41 degrees Celsius one summer afternoon. I, I remember that day very clearly. And I rode to the gym which is around 2 kilometers from my place all the way on my cycle. And then I reached the gym at around 2 p.m. when probably the sun was at its peak, the heat was at its peak and even walked out there for one and a half hours and that had been happening for years and years. So over there, uh, the seniors that used to work out with us and they happened to be quite reputable bodybuilders let me tell you, so they were not just anyone. So they used to tell us how this very thing would help us in making better bodies because we are sweating more and how people at the AC gyms are very lazy and they are not good for anything because they are they rather prefer their AC than actually sweat and work out. So there was this very big conception or notion that sweating is beneficial for your exercise, it's beneficial for weight loss, it's beneficial for muscle building. But the current scientific data that we have with us indicates otherwise. 
and at least in countries like ours where the average summer temperature is not much of 35 36 degrees which is as good as our core body temperature it's it might be actually detrimental to our optimal performances when we are training in excessive heat coming to this very topic i'll cite a study done by the us institute of medicine committee on uh, army personnel so where they were studying the effects of heat on their physiological uh, activities and how did it turn out to be so it was noticed that their top level performance that their maximal performance was indeed hindered when they were training at significantly higher temperatures so temperatures above 35 36 degrees celsius and this was rather very interesting that when people and they themselves the subjects when they trained at sub maximal level this is usually a level which is not your best which is not your top so you're not benching 100 kg at the gym you're not doing 150 kg squats at the gym rather you're working with like 70% of your one rep max 50% of your one rep max those cases so in these cases when you're working out at sub maximal level the changes were not so significant so the consensus that they developed is if you are someone who is a very top elite level athlete that demands you to be at your top that demands you to be at the top of your game all year round you are better off working in a much cooler environment than in excessive heat now there was this other uh, theory that heat acclimatization you have heard the word acclimatization so there is something called heat acclimatization where they uh, supposedly theoretically concluded that your body can get used to it if you if you are training in heat for a certain amount of time your body becomes more efficient in thermoregulation that is getting rid of the excess heat so this is indeed true and this did help true for people who are working at sub maximal level like i said if you are a top level athlete chances are you are better off training in a controlled environment where the temperature is not really a factor that will hinder your maximal output and according to this very principle the top most uh, institutions of sports across the world according to the wet bulb global temperature indexes do have a list of the temperatures that they are permitted to conduct events on so you can see on the screen the various institutes that have these recommendations stated and what actions that needs to be taken while following these recommendations so uh, average people like you and me who are not always going to the gym and performing at maximal level so for us we can get away with it provided that we are used to this heat and for people like me at least who had been training like i said for 4 to 5 years in a temperatures upwards of 37 38 degrees on a summer afternoon it pretty much doesn't matter to me so for those of you people who cannot necessarily afford to go to the ac gym because usually the charges are a lot higher please don't feel bad about it or think that your performance is going to be hindered as such like i said using my own example that if you are someone who's used to uh, training in the heat it hardly takes a few weeks once you get yourself acclimatized once you are properly hydrated once you got your electrolyte balances in check chances are your performance would not get affected to that extent where you will actually feel the brunt of it unless and until you happen to be someone again like i said who's competing at the professional level extreme methods extreme stage steps of performance enhancements has to be taken then obviously you're better off sourcing an ac gym otherwise do not stretch your budget and go for one you can stick to your good old akhara as long as you have your workout principles in place it's not going to matter so this brings us to the question whether sweating is inherently bad and whether we should refrain from it the answer is absolutely not because sweating does have its own benefits uh, it does help you clear your skin pores it does help you get rid of a lot of toxins and there are a lot more other associated benefits to sweating so we should not shy away from sweating as it is but we should not give it utmost importance when we are at a environment where our performance and our exercises mean more to us than waking us sweat that's all that i'm trying to portray out here so whether you are an individual who would loves to prefer hot and humid climate to train or you are an individual who prefers your air conditioned room to train at the end of the day it does not really have that much of a significant difference to your performance provided it's not extreme ends of the spectrum so in a true sense if you are someone who's used to like myself i'm used to training in the heat even if right now i can switch off the fan and just uh, lift weights here and there chances are my performance would decrease ever so slightly as compared to someone who's not used to training in the heat so having understood the importance of sweat we should not like i said we should not stress about the fact whether baking a sweat is 
the utmost goal we should have while working out so it's better to make your own choice and better to be comfortable at your own environment and let your workout do the talking so guys if you found this video helpful in any sort of way don't forget to give it a thumbs up and do share it with your friends and families and help spread good information so having said that guys this is your coach promit shom signing off for the week see you all again next week with another cool video till then guys stay home stay safe and stay fit